All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we'll give all praise to the Heavenly Father. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect, <clears throat> starting with the 144,000, the tabernacle of David, which will rule under Yahweh Shai on earth as it is in heaven, new bodies in a new form, new mind with the law, statutes, and commandments written in us. After that, you have the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on, all right? And we're all fighting to be a part of that body because that is the remnant, all right? So this is GMS Dallas, another uh, class. Uh, today, ultimately, we're going to go into the legacy, you know, the tabernacle, the relationship with the Most High, and this particular uh, group of spirits, which eventually came on earth, um, and how the tabernacle always represented a relationship in a uh, particular presence amongst a particular nation, all right, directly through the inspiration of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right? And we have a mediator in which pours into us, which is Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And there's an order, and there's always been an order, and that order is known as what? The Tabernacle of David, all right? Which is his uh, ride or die church, which started from the foundation of the earth. So we're gonna ultimately go into our legacy and uh, we have a whole hell of a lot. We have a rich history and we have a whole hell of a lot to look forward to. Uh, let's start in that book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Yeah. What verse? Verse 22. Okay. Points in 23. Yeah, okay. Hebrews uh, 12 and 22. It says, but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living power. Now, what was Mount Zion? Mount Zion represented, that was where the temple was built. <clears throat> right. That represents the dwelling place of the Most High. Mount Zion, when you get a Revelation, the 14 chapter, it said, I saw on Mount Zion mm -hmm. a lamb with the 144,000. That's the governing body of the Most High. That's right. the chosen place where the temple was built. Yes. But what we're reading is letting you know that there, this, this legacy this priesthood started in the heavens. All right? Go ahead. It says the heavenly Jerusalem. Heavenly into, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And to an innumerable company of angels. Right. To the general assembly in Hamashiach of the firstborn. What is an assembly? That's the church. Mm -hmm. It's a tabernacle. Okay? A particular uh, uh, group of spirits that have a special... Relationship with the Most High through Yahweh Shai. That governing body. That governing body. Yep. Because when you go to the beginning, somebody uh, go to the blue letter and get Genesis 1 and 1 real quick. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created heaven, the heavens and the earth. Right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now it was through the inspiration of the Most High God, but going to that uh, uh, Hebrew word for... Uh, uh, God. All right, Strong's G H. Yeah, Strong's H. Uh, Four thirty. Alahayim. Alahayim. There you go. It says rulers, judges, divine ones, angels. Rulers, judges, divine ones, angels. <laughs> go ahead. It says God's. Uh, God like one. Right. Yeah, right. So so the Alahayim are a church. Right. Some real quick Ephesians uh have chosen you from the foundation mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. Real quick to show you this legacy, this priesthood started in the heavens. But in the Bible we have a history of how that relationship correlated on earth. Right. Going back to Adam and we'll get that. Go ahead. Ephesians chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah and Mashiach, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach. Heavenly places. That's the blessing. That's the victory. Mm -hmm. That's the victory is that you were chosen from the foundation of the earth mm -hmm. for a particular purpose that can be altered. Go ahead. According as he has according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Right. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So if it was before the foundation, <coughs> that's the beginning. All right. Before there was a heaven and an earth, there were particular spirits chosen to be in line with the Most High. Mm -hmm. A particular order. All right. Now read what you had again. Yep. Verse twenty-three. Uh, you got point. Yep. Hold on. Real, real. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So just, just back here. John fifteen and twenty-six. But when the Comforter has come, 
whom I will send unto you from the Father, mm -hmm. even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Yeah, right. That's it. Wow. That's the relationship. All right. Even in the wilderness, we'll show you there was always an order to how the Heavenly Father put the Spirit upon men on earth. And the same order is happening right now. That's right. Man. Go ahead. It says, verse 23, to the general assembly in Hamashiach of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Right. The <clears throat> general assembly. Which are written in heaven. Which are written in heaven. The firstborn. Yep. That's the that's the the, the, the the beginning of this priesthood. This legacy started in the heavens. That's right. Man. Under Yahweh Shai. Heavenly order. His voice heavenly from order. heaven we heard, like it says right. in Peter. Right. Heavy, right. man. Right. Man. Can I get that word church real quick? Go ahead. That word church in the Greek, of course, is ecclesia, right? Now, when you get it in the definition here, in the uh, in the index, the scripture index here, it says the name. It says the name is transferred to the assembly of faithful Christians, which you know what that is, already dead and received into heaven, right? And also, too, going down, it says uh, it says uh, and a company of uh, a company of Christians. Or those who hoping for eternal salvation through Yahweh Shah Mashiach observe their own religious rites, hold their own religious meetings. Basically, he put a spirit on these spirits to always be of a particular way. Mm -hmm. Even in these times, for the story's sake, we, we fell away, but there was a point where we was going to click back into it. Right. There's a particular spirit he placed upon these special spirits for a particular point in the story to get victory and for him to set up paradise on this thing we call earth. And to get it in rightful order. Yep. Spiritual sleeper cells. Yep. Yep. Come Go in. ahead. It says observe their own religious rites, hold their own religious meetings, like like right now. Right. This is a church that's that we have them in our house. Right. You know, for example, it says uh it says and manage their own affairs according to regulations prescribed to the body for order's sake. Order. Says, like you know, I know you like to go into that scripture where it talks about how Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the firstborn, and then those after in their order. Right. You know, and that's that that's that heavenly order that yeah. was already prescribed from the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be headed, you know, by Yahweh Shai, but underneath Yahweh Shai you're gonna have gonna have King David. Right. Yeah, Yahweh Shai and one forty four, then you have the large multitude. Okay. Those are some special spirits unto the Lord, man. Straight up. Within their order. First and the, and under uh <laughs> Yahweh Shai, the first spirit is David, Peter. And we'll get into all of that. Now, um you you got some more? I, I just finished 23 out. Okay. It says, verse 23 in Hebrews 12, to the general assembly in Hamashiach of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to Yahweh, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Just made perfect made from perfect. the foundation of the earth, like you said, right. governing as joint heirs along right. with Yahweh Shah. Right. You know? And you could very well be sitting amongst some of those very spirits, man. That's right. why you got to be very, very careful. That's the temple that That's the is temple. going to lead yep. out, I guess, yep. to yep. what the spirit is today. That's right. it. That's right. it. The, right. It's being rebuilt. The right. tabernacle of David is being built, but in a spiritual sense. Come now, on. on the earth, we know at the forefront of that uh, priesthood is what? Now, uh, get, get somebody get Genesis. Uh, 14. Well, as a matter of fact, on earth, actually, Adam was the first was priest. The first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now Melchizedek was made a priest in the heavens. Yeah. All right, but he's mentioned in Genesis the uh, 14th chapter, I believe, but uh Adam was technically the first priest on earth. And how was that? Somebody get Genesis the second chapter. I got you. Because what went on in the temple that we know of? The heavenly Father sent his voice. Mm -hmm. Right. He sent his inspiration, all right, and, and, and wherever that temple dwelt all right, to establish relationships between him. But he did that directly through Adam. Go ahead. All right, this is uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, mm -hmm. and man became a living soul. Right, he became a living soul. That, that was the beginning of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding being established in a particular man and people. This is the beginning of the priesthood on earth. The Lord has given this man order because uh, when you get uh, somebody gets second edges, the third chapter. Got it right here. Go ahead. This is second Ezra chapter three, verse four. It says, I'm going to start at verse three. And my spirit was so moved so that I began to speak words full of fear to the most high and said, O Lord, who bearest rule, thou speakest at the beginning 
when thou didst plant the earth mm -hmm. and that thyself alone and commanded the people and gave us a body unto Adam without a soul. Right. So the, the spirits that were created in the heaven, uh, the, the order that the heavenly father set up in the heaven, he's transitioning unto the earth. Right. Now, I remember someone asked, well, how could Yahweh Shai create everything and then be Adam? Well, the, those spirits. If the Lord sent them, he sent them down into the earth mm -hmm. at some point. Yep. The sons of God. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Started with Adam, though. Yeah. That's not like a, the mindset of thinking he was only on the planet by itself. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, no. Nah. Well, yeah. The, the nah. Adam represents the first one to, re to have a, re a relationship directly from on high on earth mm -hmm. with yeah, the right. most high. Huh? So, like, I was just saying, he was giving the way. He was given the way. We gonna go ahead. For sure. Verse five. And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands. And did us breathe unto him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. Right, and we're partaking in that breath. We were we were alive before we found heard the truth, but we are living now that we know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we, the, we we have been restored unto that way. Right. I got that word uh, uh, formed. Right. In Genesis. Two, uh, Yasar. It says uh, to form, to fashion, to frame, uh, human acti divine activity. Uh huh. Divine. Yep. Of creation, right. of original creation, mm -hmm. individuals, uh, of Israel as a people. Right. For us to have the legacy we have, it all goes back to Adam. Yep. That everything that we have goes back to him. All right. And of course, through the, through through Noah, through the flood. <laughs> All right, but 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 him, uh, uh, Abel, Seth, and we'll get those little points before we get get, get into the uh, other scriptures. But this is the beginning of the legacy. Right. You got some more. A, a, a preordained, uh, preordained plan, uh, a divine frame uh, to be formed, to be created, to be predetermined, right? To be preordained, to be formed, right? I'm talking about Adam and that uh, and that breath being breathed into him, right? All right, for the dust of the ground, it says, and he breathed, he breathed, that word for breathe is in the pot. All right, uh, to cause to breathe, to be blown. Uh, yeah, Remember, Yahweh breathe. shot breathe on a disciple? Sure yep. yeah, sure yeah, it's all through him. That's, right. that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. Go, uh, go back. This is back in 2nd Ezra 3 and, five, uh, 3 and 6. I'm going to read 5 again. And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thy hands. And did his breathe into him the breath of life. Uh -huh. And he was made living before thee. Uh -huh. And thou ledest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted, before ever the earth came forward. Mm -hmm. And said, and made mention how people try to be like, well, how was that Yahweh Shai? You know what I'm saying? If he was there in the beginning. You gotta remember, man was already created before Adam was even mentioned. There you go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's right. right. Just right. as a little prelude, right. so Yahweh right. Shai and the Alahayim created everything, right. and later on throughout time, his spirit right. came down and rested right. upon, you know, rested in the earth. What is he called in uh in Luke? The Son of God. The Adam of was God. the Son of God, mm -hmm. and the sons of God stemmed from him. That's right. Right. All right. Facts. And some more on that. But it say, uh, did you read the part where it say uh, he gave command to love that, his way? It, it's coming right here. Verse seven. And unto him thou gave us commandment to love thy way. See, Adam was given a commandment to love thy way, but it was supposed to be a, a, a it was supposed to be natural. Mm -hmm. It was just supposed to be a way he walked in. We didn't, need, we didn't, we technically weren't supposed to have it written down. Right. But for the purpose of the story, you know, we fell and we needed to have it written on stone for for the story to be forwarded. But it was supposed to be a way. Right. And how you know it was a priesthood is because what keep. What, uh, what, what does it say about uh, Abel? He offered up a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Right. Abel is synonymous with a sacrifice mm -hmm. that the Lord was pleased with. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right? So Absolutely. we know that Adam, when you put the story together, Adam, through Abel, basically he passing down a priesthood. Mm -hmm. A priesthood is being passed down through this particular line. Noah himself, the first thing he did when he got off the boat was what? Offered up a sacrifice mm -hmm. unto the sure Lord. did. I got a little bit of commentary on uh, Go ahead. Abel's sacrifice. Go ahead. It says the superior. This is uh, the Gil commentary. We, let's read it first, though. Yeah. Somebody, let's go to uh, Genesis uh, dealing with Abel because Adam had two children, Cain and Abel. And Adam, Abel is synonymous with a sacrifice. Go ahead. 
This is the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she again bare his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Okay, Abel was a keeper of the sheep, just like Jacob, just like David, just like Peter. Mm -hmm. That's the, right. The, the sheep followed Moses. Moses, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. He was a keeper of the sheep. Uh, 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 Abel was also David. He's the beginning of the, 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 the tabernacle. That's right. That's right. All right, because it started with Adam. He passed it directly down to uh, uh, Abel. Mm -hmm. But Abel was slew. So that legacy, as we will show you, was restored through Seth. Go ahead. That's right. It said, but Cain was a tiller of the ground, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Abel, he also brought the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. Right, that, that's how you know, that's, a, that's the priesthood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, because uh, the, the fat was what the Lord wanted that's burnt. Right. That's right. Because that's right. Jake wanted, that, that was a very, that was a coveted portion, because that yeah. fat is closest that part is closest to that meat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when that, that season is seeking, <laughs> seeking Jake, but the Lord says, sacrifice this unto me. That's right. Because you can do even other things with that. You can make soaps, all types of stuff you can do with the fat. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, so, offer that unto me. Man, wow. And when you read the law, he want, I want that fat. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Go ahead. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And there Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Right, now, he, Hebrews 11, real quick, with Abel. Starting at verse 4. Yeah, real right. quick. Okay. So this is basically the, the beginning of the priesthood for us on earth. Starting with Adam, we see it's passed down through Abel. But what does it represent? A, a special relationship. That's right. That's his right. presence is among you. This is his, his tabernacle. Go ahead. Hebrews 11, verse 4. It says, By faith Abel offered unto the Most High a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Right, a sacrifice. As the priesthood, you know, uh, the Levitical, what was it so synonymous with sacrifice? How was I? Sacrifice. So there's something the Lord requires that's very dear unto him sacrifice. Go ahead. Uh, it says, By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Mm. Most High testifying of gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaking. Woo! The Most High testified of his gifts. So the Lord was well pleased with that sacrifice. So this is the beginning of our legacy. And then we know Abel uh, slew. <coughs> uh, 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 Abel was slew, but go ahead and what you got. Yeah, this is uh, the commentary on uh, Hebrews 11. It says, the superior excellency of Abel's sacrifice to Cain's lay both in the matter, uh, in the matter and in the manner of it. The one was offered heartily to the Lord, the other one only in show. The one offered, uh, the one was offered in faith, the other not. Abel looked through his sacrifice to the sacrifice of anointing. Because we know the Lord, I see, he requires blood. Right. Here it is, Abel, Cain come with some damn grapes and, yeah. you know, uh, cabbage, greens. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. He knew what the Lord required, but he's just, he's a, he's a rebellious. He's a rebellious child. They say Abel sacrificed the lamb. There you go. Yeah, Abel sacrificed the first, uh, first of his, uh, his first was, and it was a lamb. There you go. <laughs> I got you a got precept yep, really go quick because it shows you what made um, Cain sacrifice so evil. Mm -hmm. This is First John chapter three, and I'm going to start at verse eleven. It says, "For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, mm -hmm. and slew his brother." And wherefore slew he him? He's right. asking, why did he slay him? That's right. That's right. And, and, it's, and it's beautiful that this line is basically, they do things the way the most high want it to be done. Mm -hmm. From the foundation of the earth. That's now right. it's happening on earth. That's right. This particular way the Lord want. And this people is the only nation through this sea line that, we're, that when you read about the Bible, that the Lord is dealing with on that level. Right. They do it. We do it in a particular way. The way we break down the Bible is particular. Nobody else can do it. It's a particular relationship. Yep. Go ahead. Spiritual. Yep. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, mm -hmm. and his brothers were righteous. Right. See, the, the heathen, Esau, <laughs> they offering up a sacrifice on their own merit. This whole new world order is a sacrifice. A carnal sacrifice. They're, they're building a temple. Like, we're building a spiritual temple. This is a temple. This is a, basically... 
Babylon is a church to Satan. Straight up. Literally, like this is a, they're building, a, we're witnessing the Tower of Babel, but in a spiritual sense. And they're trying to spread it worldwide, worldwide control of the Heavenly Father's creation under their own tabernacle and own order and way. No, there's a particular order that the Lord is going to set up from the, that he set up from the foundation of the earth. That's why the scriptures say on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. There's a particular order the Lord wanted and wants on earth that started in the heavens. Right. Now we've been detached from that and we fell from it because what? The flesh. All right, now read, uh, where we at? What, was, what, what did we just read? I just finished up this time. Okay, uh, uh, now read Seth. Uh, read about Seth at the Abel with Slew, uh, oh, okay. Genesis 4. Okay. It's like at the, the, at the very end. For sure. And then uh, somebody get Genesis, has, the fifth chapter. Commentary this is back. Yeah, yeah no, nah, we don't need that. We can just, we'll just put the pieces together because there's a bunch of scriptures we need. Go ahead. Come. This is back in the book of Genesis. Because um, you got to put the picture, you got to put the picture together, man. Story. This is a story, man. Yeah. Seth, you know, like, um, I guess you can read that uh, commentary. But Seth represents, at that time, like, these are leaders. Oh, yeah. there's, there's other people, too, though. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's Sons, right. daughters. Yep. Right. <laughs> like, you just think Seth, the one planet, man. Planet full of folks. Yeah, this, this is a, these are things happening on earth, but the Torah is ultimately what was given unto Moses, as we'll go into later, when he went up to the mount. The Lord gave him every like everything we everything, have written, yes. like the Torah. Yep. Like Moses literally, he abridged it because you know he couldn't write everything he yeah. saw. He abridged yeah. it yeah. so that we in the latter days can be restored to our legacies. Like in the beginning, look what he's talking to you. Yeah, and then how all the names link up, bro. To, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's telling yeah. the story. He, the, the Torah is very important. That's right. Uh, go ahead. This is Genesis chapter four, verse twenty-five. And Adam knew his wife again. Right. This is after Cain slew Abel to what? Cut off that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And he wants to cut it off today. Come. Go ahead. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and Woo! called his name Seth. And wait a minute. Did not uh, the, the Greeks defile the temple? Absolutely. Did not the Romans sack the last living, uh, uh, physical temple we had? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Cain tried to cut off the, 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 the sacrifice. He Absolutely. tried to cut it off. The same spirit. Go ahead. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For the Most High said, she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel who came slew. Go ahead. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. Uh -huh. And he called his name Enos. Uh -huh. or Anawash, which means man. Then began, man up. They manned up right here. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they stood on their feet as men and did what? Go ahead. Con. It makes sense why it's called. Cause it's, then began men to call on the name of the Lord. Right. Now, what does church mean? Call to out. call yeah. out. Yeah. So the Lord is letting you know this line is forwarding a particular message. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's associated with the name of the, the Most High God, Yahweh. That's right. This is the church. Okay. It's passing it down. Now, did you want to read that? Commentary you had, or on Seth? Yeah. Seth, yeah. Yeah. So you see how the Lord doubled down with Seth. But we could just we could just move. You know. I mean, yeah. It's, a, it's up to you. I got it. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Just read through it. Okay. I'll read. This is uh. This is in the book. This is in. The, excuse me. In the Josephus. We're reading out of the Josephus. Yeah. Kind and this is chapter three in book one. Um. It says. Um. I'm sorry. This is chapter two. It says. It says he was indeed. He had indeed many other children talking about Adam, but Seth in particular, but Seth in particular. As for the rest, it will be tedious to name them. See, people think that, you know, you just hear of Seth. Uh, that was Adam's only children. Adam had a bunch of children, yeah, man. Children. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he was like 800 something years old. Right. People yeah. talk about how, where, where is other women. Adam lived 800 years, baby. Not, not 930, almost. Oh, 930. Yeah. Shalaka. So, so you, Adam experienced things mm -hmm. that you shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just Eve. No, Come Eve on. was just mentioned for a particular <laughs> exactly. reason, man. Right. He had other women, man. He had a whole yeah. bunch of children, but the Bible. For the purpose of getting to the point, right, is pointing out particular men who represent something special. This is ultimately the priesthood being established in the earth, as it is in heaven, starting with Adam, God. being passed down. Right, go ahead. God, continuing on, it says, uh, 
but set the particular. It says, As for the rest of the tedious, name them. I will therefore only endeavor to give an account of those that proceed from Seth. Now, this Seth, when he was brought up and came to those years in which he could discern what was good, that's very interesting to me. He came, it says he, he, he came to a certain year that he was able to discern what was good. Right. That's in the law, and isn't the right. law that, you know, the priesthood teach you the What's right and what's wrong? Judges. The right. Alahaya right. were what? Judges. Yeah. <laughs> it says, became a virtuous man. And as he was himself of an excellent character, so did he leave children behind him who imitated his virtue. All these proved to be of good disposition. They also inhabited the same uh, country without dissension and in, the and in an happy condition. Without any misfortunes falling upon them till they died. They was pretty much good because they was adherence of the way. Mm -hmm. They also were the inventors of that peculiar sort of wisdom, which is concerned with the heavenly bodies and their order. Stars, the constellations, all of that stuff. That they had understanding on that. Right, and they always had the, the sacrifice was there. Mm -hmm. All right, if you follow it, the sacrifice always re established. Abraham. Yep. He, he, he set an altar up to the Lord mm -hmm. and offered up sacrifice. Yep. He was going to sacrifice Isaac. Yep. Yep. So that 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 relationship was always there. Go ahead. Somebody locked him behind. Yeah. <laughs> um. What the Genesis five? Yeah, read that. Read that. All right, Genesis five and one. It says, "This is the book of the generation of Adam." Right. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Go ahead. And the day that God created man in in the likeness of God made He him. In the in the day the Lord created man in the likeness. He gave this particular nation, starting with this man, Adam, mm -hmm. an order, a way, a priesthood, a relationship from the heavens on earth on how to govern right. earth and keep it, make it paradise. Go ahead. Verse 2, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Male and female created he them and called their name Adam. Go right. ahead. Right. And the day when they were created. Mm-hmm. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness mm -hmm. after his image and called his name Seth. Right. Called his name Seth. Right. Go ahead. And in the day, in the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. Mm -hmm. and he begot sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. See? Mm -hmm. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah, lot of people. Is the, you know, mm -hmm. There's other people yeah. who are of that line. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, when you're thinking of it, you're just thinking, oh, man, one man, you know. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on, verse 5, it says, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. And Seth lived a hundred. Right. And now, five. where does the part where it says he begot a son in his own image? Oh, uh, it was back up. Yeah, it was black. Yeah, read that again. All right, this is Genesis 5 and 3. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begot a son in his own likeness after his image, and called his name Seth. Mm, called his name Seth. That's right. So that priesthood, yep. since Abel was slew, was then passed down through Seth. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, and then Seth's, Seth's line kept it. Right. That's right. He doubled That's down. Right. He went from Seth to Enos, right. and all those children from that line right. kept it. You know That's what I'm right. saying? So right. Cain, right. Cain was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? He had a whole another right. set of problems. And then, yeah. as the earth the got the sons of God started to go off, it was a man named Noah yep. Yep. who stuck to those ways. All right, through him, Shem. Yep. All right, and then uh, uh, you have our, uh, our Faxad. Our Faxad. Yeah. And when you go down the line, this priesthood, this way was restored to who? Abraham. That's right. Mm -hmm. Who offered yeah. up a, uh, uh, when he, he he even offered up in a second. Somebody find it where Abraham. 15. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, get that real quick. Come, come. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 15. It's starting at the point here in verse, I'm going to start at verse uh, start at verse 5. It says, and this is going into Abram, and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Mm -hmm. And he believed in the Lord and he counted unto him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the land of a, of a war the Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. Right, he brought them out of Babylon, mm -hmm. <laughs> physical Babylon. Yep. Go ahead. Verse 8, and he said, Lord, Yahweh, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And if I may um, find it interesting, you read multiple accounts 
where the Lord spoke to righteous individuals. And they were bold enough to ask the Most High to show them proof or confirmation mm -hmm. that this is what this was. You find this example numerous times in the scriptures of different men. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to point that out right, right there. Right. And then when you read it, it says, And he said unto him, Take me an old, take me an heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. See them threes right there, too. Right. And those are all sacrificial uh, yep. Sacrificial, creatures. Yep. And also, Yahweh Shai's walk with those men was three years before he was sacrificed. There you, go. Man. you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And he and it took Abraham to travel unto Mount Moriah. It took three days, three days. for them to get there before he mm -hmm. set with the sacrifice of son. Isaac, that's right. Go ahead. In verse 10. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each that's piece that's one against another. But the birds divided he not, because the birds are small animals, you know. Verse 11. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Mm -hmm. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Right. And he said to Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's right. not theirs. And he basically gave, but did you read the part where he offered up a sacrifice? It's, it, 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 yeah. I'll jump down. Yeah, to just it. get that point. Come, come. Yeah. The, the, that, that's the point. Okay, okay, I'll jump down yeah. to what the, the, it was accepted. Yeah. This is verse, um, jumping down to verse. 17 and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark behold it well behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces mm -hmm. of that sacrifice mm -hmm. and in that same day the lord made a covenant with abram saying unto thy seed have i given this land from the river egypt unto the great river the river Euphrates. that relationship is always tied to sacrifice bro um, was Man. that the one that you wanted right there? i mean that's dope. yeah that's good that's okay. good enough Come. that's good enough now, um, go, go to where you are, 2nd Ezra, the uh, third chapter, and start at uh, 13. 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 13. Now, when they live so wickedly before among now when they live so wickedly before thee, mm -hmm. thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. So, our people fell away. There was a falling away at this time. Our people became Gentiles in a physical Babylon. Come. Priesthood. <laughs> just like you know, we it wasn't no connection. The Lord wasn't dealing with us. God. All right, but who did He restore it through? This is the importance of Abraham. Facts. He was restored to that breath that was, was breathing to Adam. That's right. Can I make a point, Elder? Yep. If I may? Um, also, too, whenever like we're just to land back off the point, you know, at that time the Tower of Babel was built, you know, and, and leading up to that time, going down throughout time to Abraham, you know, that that. That righteous seed was still there, but That's throughout it. time, you know, the connection between Yahweh and Mount Shana people kind of started dissipating a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when when, Ab when Abraham came on the scene, that you know, through Terah, Terah was an idol worshiper. You know, he was he was worshiping other gods. Right. That's you right. know. Yep. Yep. So that was a that 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 straying away, if you will, was a, it was a it was a passing away for for a particular period of time. Right. We fell away. And it's the same. It's so beautiful because we had it's literally the same story that we got. Yep, yep. The Lord, the same thing. Yep. The Lord, the Lord restoring the priesthood on the earth through Yahweh shot through the Holy Spirit. Now. That's right. That's the same thing He did. Because who did Abraham meet? Melchizedek. That's the that was the relationship being restored to That's His right. chosen people through this man. Facts. The priesthood. Go ahead. Verse fourteen. Him thou lovest, and unto him only. Thou showest thy will. And unto him thou showest thy will. That comes with the priesthood. That comes with everything. The understanding. That's right. The That's breakdown. Right. Unto him thou showest thy will. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. Come on. Right. And it's crazy, man. We haven't even got to the start of my lesson that I was going to do yet. This is all what we, we just, because I didn't add that part to it. So up to the, you know, we, we, we're leading into starting where I wanted to start at, but this is beautiful. This is crucial. It's crucial, love you it. know. So, you know, maybe we can do two parts, but we'll get as far as we can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. Right. These were all, they were raised in these customs, this particular way. Isaac offered up sacrifice. Uh, Jacob offered up sacrifice. They all had special relationships with the Most High, visions, <laughs> right? Go ahead. As for Jacob, 
uh, thou didst choose him to thee mm -hmm. and put by Esau. Put by Esau. Go ahead. And so Jacob became a great multitude. Right. Out of, out of the 12 tribes. And there's a promise attached to them. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt. Right. When I led it. Now, what is the importance of Egypt? That's where we get our first, what we know of, building of a actual tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the most high sending uh, uh, angel unto Moses. All right. Now, we're just going to jump to Exodus, the 19th chapter, to get into that history. <clears throat> because this is the first known building of a tabernacle where we can see it actually being ordered. We know that they most likely had them back then. The sacrifice that Abel, you know, it was associated with something. Yeah, absolutely. But it's very vague. It's, yes. But if you get you, you got to be spiritual. Yes. Right. The, the Abel was the beginning of the, the, the Adam was the, the start. Abel was that church that is all going to be founded upon. Mm -hmm. The sons of God. But he was cut off. But the Lord had mercy. <laughs> the mercy in restore in, in, in Seth came. Man. <laughs> That's mercy. Yeah, I know, right? Straight up. <laughs> the mer you, the, up. We needed mercy at that time. Yes. Because yes. if, if the Lord didn't give us Seth, we be we wouldn't be here. That's right. Yeah. We'd be cut off. Woo! Mm -hmm, so that was mercy right there. Yep. <laughs> this is all it's all surrounding Abel. Okay, the head of the church. Now um where we at? Say Exodus nineteen. Yeah, get get Exodus the nineteenth chapter, start at sixteen and then we'll We'll read. No, nah, somebody closer. Somebody closer. I got it. Yeah, go Exodus ahead. 19 and 16, it says, And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. Right. And now, this is uh, Moses, you know, basically being established in Egypt. You know, he speak. As a matter of fact, go up to uh, verse 6 in that chapter. Verse 6. Verse, verse 5. Verse 5. It says, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed. This is the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord starting doing something. He's, he's, this is basically how he entered into a covenant and established the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, the first covenant, the first agreement. Go ahead. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Ain't that something that Peter said? Mm -hmm. If you go be a peculiar sure people, you sure did. <laughs> Same spirit. Go Same ahead. Spirit. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and and holy nation. Mm -hmm. These are the words which thou speak unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Do you want to jump back down, or right? So just go jump down to uh, verse. Uh, yeah, read. Uh, Start at 14, maybe. Go ahead. Mind if I just slip something in there, Yeah, too? absolutely. This right here is showing you that this acts as a bypass to the, to the order of uh, Aaron. Because he says a kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm. But this is even before the Levitical priesthood is even orchestrated. Mm -hmm. So he's going even further on, like, look, all y'all going to be a kingdom of priests. Right. Which we understand that in later times, we're in right now, it was going to go back to the priesthood under the order of Melchizedek. Because mm -hmm. we weren't a kingdom of priests around that time, but it was right. all orchestrated. Right. You had priests out of Levi, right. Right. but now in the Yahweh we are all kings and priests, you know, right. which that's going to happen, right. you know. Just wanted to slip that in there. Right, right. and Melchizedek was the, the, the king of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. priest of the Most High God. That's, that's how right. we're, we're going to be kings and priests under that order. That's right. All right. Um, where we at? Verse uh, 14, in Exodus 19 and 14, and Moses went down from the mount unto the people mm -hmm. and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes. They had to be sanctified. Why? Because the presence of the Lord was for the... You can't come the, into the temple. Right. The chariot yet. was for the come. That's right. Like the, the, like the Lord sent the chariot. Why? We're going to read it. But um, this is our history. So how, how you going to say ain't no miracles, bro? Right. <laughs> Ridiculous. This is our heritage. <laughs> like, come I mean, on. there's so much more we can go into with Moses, but I just want to hit these points. Yeah. Dealing with the tabernacle. Go ahead. Verse 15. And he said unto the people, be ready against the third day come not at your wives mm, sure you can't have sex on the sabbath yep. absolutely all right and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud voice of the trumpet mm -hmm. now i know who was on this chariot 
who who when this chair when this presence of the Lord came down, who 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 was it? There you go. It was it was the Most High. That's Yahweh Shai. Now, how can we prove that that's Yahweh Shai? Exodus twenty-three. You get it. Exodus chapter 23 and verse, uh, I saw verse So 20. you're literally watching the, 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 the story is basically showing you a relationship that the Most High had with this particular people through particular men. This, this is the story of the scriptures. This is our story. But it's always associated with a sacrifice, with a tabernacle. And that's what we're going to get into. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20, it says, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way mm -hmm. and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Mm -hmm. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. Provoke him not. Beware of him. So the Lord sent an angel. Even at the bush, it was the angel of the Lord. Right. Yep. His voice. His voice. Yep. His word. Right. Yep. <laughs> we know who his word is. This is his literal voice, but his voice is a separate. He's so powerful. His voice is a whole nother power within itself. God of being a whole nother entity. And we're an extension of that word. That's right. We That's have right. the words. God, straight up. Yeah. Something I find interesting. When you read it in the, the account with John, the revelator. Right. Well, his, his account in, in the book of John. Right. After Yahweh Shai was baptized in the Jordan, it mentions, you know, Andrew and another disciple that was there. With certain scholars believe it was John. But after that account had taken place, they went and told. Andrew went and told his brother Peter, you know what I'm saying? And John went and told his brother James. But it goes to the account right when Andrew told his brother Peter, when they were on their way, Yahweh shot already met up with Peter. You know what I'm saying? And, and pretty much it goes to the account. It makes me think about that account in Exodus 3 where the, where the, the, when the Lord spoke to Moses. You know what I'm saying? And right when it was told unto Peter, Yahweh shot had already appeared. When they were about to go back to Yahweh Shai's dwelling. Right. Yahweh Shai was already like, I already know where y'all finna go. But I'm right. talking to you, Peter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Establish him to be the head of the church. There you go. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. For sure. For sure. Yep. Uh, where we at? Uh, Exodus 23. We were solidifying uh, right. how it came down. The so that was, you know, this was Yahweh Shai. Even uh, somebody get Deuteronomy 33. That's the spirit. I was thinking about yeah, Hit that real quick. Deuteronomy 33 and around uh, 6. Because this angel that... Because we can't, a lot of people like to talk about the great wars Joshua won and mm -hmm. the great things that happened in Egypt. Right. But they love to disassociate the angel that was there right. that the Most High said. Absolutely. Yep. Joshua had to bow down to him. Right. That was the very and he didn't reason all of those things happened. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. That's this the was the basically, reason. he's a mediator. That's what a priest is. Yep. There's a special relationship the Lord has with this people, but it's through a particular mediator. We can't go, so we don't get straight to the most high. There's always a mediator. Mm -hmm. Can I get a go point? ahead. This one verse, Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encountered round about them that fear him cool. and delivered them. There you so go. That's always talking about Yahweh right. That's a particular presence, Yahweh mm -hmm. But then after that, it's a, a company right. of angels. That's it. Right. That are in order doing his will mm -hmm. for the favor of the elect. <clears throat> keeping you in a way. Verse 12. However, the outcome of the victory may seem on the outward. It's right. It's always that angel. It's always right. Crazy. That's what a victory yeah. is. Yeah. In, the, right. in the fact that from the foundation of the earth, you were written into the story to win. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's, that's, says, I'm sorry. I was going to say, that's one way that makes the most high omnipresent. Right. Not only omni, not omnipotent, right. but also omnipresent is the mere fact that he has his angels surrounded by us watching right. and controlling these things. Right, right. It's written, it's, yeah, it's, it's written in the Gospels that it says, but uh, Yahweh Shah said, Behold, uh, that their angels always behold mm -hmm. the face of them, mm -hmm. meaning that there's always angels that guide our path. But they'll, you know, like this, like it says in Hebrews, man, they're ministering. Uh, their spirit sends to minister before us. Mm -hmm. Just want that Deuteronomy 33. Go, go ahead. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 33. I get to the point. This is a uh, verse two. It says, and he said, the Lord Yahweh came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. Mm. He shined forth from Mount Paran. So the Lord entered in through that the east, mm -hmm. like, yeah. but oh, right over Seir. <laughs> and he's going to come back that very same way according to prophecy. Habakkuk, go, go ahead. He shined from Mount Paran and he came with 10,000 of saints. Woo! A whole bunch there was a whole of bunch of angels. Of when, and, and the Moses and Jake saw this. Yes. How could you lose faith after that? But they did. Yep. But the angels literally, for the law to be written for us, there was literally an angelic presence that came over Mount Sinai. 
and Moses went up there, all right, and, and, and he didn't go all the way into the chariot, but that alone, like wherever he was at, however he was there, maybe the Lord brought him to it, I don't know, but go ahead. Just going to say, we, we talked about in the lesson we did in Luke. Right. When Yahweh was silent during the transfiguration, right. it's worded how it is in Luke. It was somewhat similar, right. minus the terror and everything, right, 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 right. to what happened up there, how the smoke descended upon the mountain. Right, right, and right. Went into it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and Mo, when he came down, he was glowing. Yes. And he told the rest of Israel, y'all can't see this. Yeah. You'll, you'll die. Don't even touch the mountain. Yeah. It was so, it was so heavy. Go ahead. It, just to add on to the point, it, you know, it says the mountain was on fire. It was smoke. Like, literally, the mountain was on fire. Yep. And Moses went into the fire. Mm -hmm. It yeah. made me think of, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Middleton went to the fire. And the wow. Below there, they didn't get burnt. They didn't get burnt. It, it, just to add to that, just to add to that, because it mentions how Moses was in a cleft when that fire came because they thought he died. Right. So he was actually inside of a cave. Right. And it says the hand of the Lord covered up the cave. That right. way Moses didn't get burned. Goodness gracious. Which was the, was the, the, the hiding place or the shelter. Right, right. You know, just, just to add That's to that. That's Yahweh That's Yahweh Shai. That, that angel, man, he was there. That's right. He had him. Right. You know, he had yeah. him. Go ahead. Uh, finishing up verse 2 in Deuteronomy 33, it says, He shined forth from Mount Paran and came, and he came with the 10,000 of saints. Mm -hmm. From his right hand went a fiery law for From his and right hand, on. from the right <laughs> hand of the Come Most on. High went a fiery law. Come on. It, 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 but you got to have ears to hear and eyes to see. That's right. Because you got the Torah only people trying to deny the existence of a, a mediator. He's all He's all throughout the book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even how the heaven and earth was created was through an order that the, the Most High gave this particular church a blueprint. Now, let's go back to Exodus uh, 19. All right. Exodus. So this is when the Lord sends the, the angel down to establish a relationship and a covenant with them. Go ahead. Exodus 19 and 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. They trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with the Most High. Woo! And they stood at the nether part of the mountain. Now this is the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. In captivity in Egypt, and the Lord restoring them. Yes. Having favor on them, and taking them on a journey to deliver them out of captivity. The same, the brothers, the same thing is happening now. now. Go ahead. And now Zion was all together on the smoke. Woo! Because the Lord had descended upon it in fire, like we've been going into. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and the Most High answered him by real a quick, voice. Real quick. In a voice, the Most High actually, this is a uh, second Edges 13 and uh, 18. I started at 17. And it came to pass when thou us the seed of, out of Egypt that brought us them up to Mount Sinai and bowing the heavens thou didst set fast the earth moveth the whole world that earthquake. Where are you reading? I'm sorry. So 13 and 18. Second Edges 3 and 18. Okay. And bowing the heavens thou didst set fast the earth moveth the whole world and madest the depths to tremble and troublest the men at that age. And thy glory went forth through four gates of fire and of earthquake. He's sending the Holy Spirit down. Dang. And of wind and of cold that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob in diligence unto the generation of Israel. So he's establishing a church, but who's the head of it? Moses, which is Abel, which is David, Peter. which is Rubabel, which is Peter. <laughs> All right. So Moses is important, man. We can't don't sleep on Moses. Don't sleep on the Torah. Don't sleep on that history. You read it. It's dope. Yeah, he gave us a lot. Yeah, because uh, you got people that's reading the Bible carnally and people that's reading it spiritually. You know, and that's, and that's the difference. It, it was, bro, how can you be a Torah only Israelite and there's no Yahweh? That's not possible if you read and would understand, right, you know? Right, right. right. Come. Start at uh, 2nd Edges 14 and uh, 3. Go ahead. 2nd uh, Edges chapter 14, uh, verse 3. Then said he unto me, 
in the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talk with him with my people serving Egypt. Mm -hmm. And I sent him. And it's ultimately it's all through Yahweh Shah. However, he came uh, uh, to, to Moses. It was through the inspiration of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right, go ahead. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt mm -hmm. and brought him up up to the Mount of Sinai mm -hmm. where I held him by, by me a long season. I brought him up to Mount Sinai and I held him by me for a long season. This is where we got the Torah. All right? Like the Most High dug in, he fed, he, he would say he walked, he spoke with him face to face. Yep. He, his knowledge, he put it, the spirit on Moses, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And told him many, many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end and commanded him saying, these words shalt thou declare and these words shalt thou hide. So we only get what, the, what, what Moses declared. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, see, when we say 100% truth, we're just saying right. of what the heavenly, the portion that the elect needed to get out of this story, mm -hmm. they have it. Mm -hmm. It's not lacking. It's 100% yeah. that's going to get them there. That's right. Yep. But they overall, know, within know that, we know there's yeah. stuff that we don't have. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, it's that that's simple. Right. That's right. But Jake is so beat down that they can't see themselves having 100%. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with the flesh, everything with the spirit. That's right. The elect ain't going to win with 90%. They're going right. to win with 100%. That's right. Um, Go ahead. Huh. Is that it? That's it. Now, yeah, that's it. let's go back to Exodus, the uh, 19th chapter. Uh, this is back in Exodus 19 and 19. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and the Most High answered him by a voice. Right. We all by his voice. <laughs> yeah. We know what the word of the Absolutely. Lord is. That's a power within itself, bro. A man, how do you, your voice within itself is a whole separate entity. It's a vibration too. Right. And we have a, a an, an inkling of how to do that through having children. And we extend our mm -hmm. way unto them to the best of our ability, yes. of course. But that's what the Lord did with Yahweh Shai in the heavens, mm -hmm. in the spiritual sense. Whew. How could you wrap your head around that? Now, go ahead. Keep reading. Verse 20. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the, the top of the mount. And Moses went up. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, go down, charge the people. Charge the people, lead the people. Mm -hmm. Lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Right. Yeah, no man has seen the face of the heavenly father. Right. So the Lord, he, he dug into Moses, man. Hey, he remember, imagine his relationship with Enoch. <laughs> Enoch, you know he had followers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. It said he walked with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 22, and let the priest also which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves. That was the order, the yeah. priest. That was the order. Aaron, all right, uh, Moses, Aaron, the priest. It was 70. And there's a point where Moses went up to the Mount. One, get that in Numbers 11 Numbers real 11, quick. I got you. Let's just hit it real quick. Okay. I got to bring it out just yeah, because. Yeah, so we might be in for a ride. We'll, we'll go as long as we can, but man, we haven't even got past one of the scriptures, bro, that I wanted to bring out. <laughs> oh, <we're> old, man. <laughs> but hey, if the spirit is, you know. That's, that's what's going to make it make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, At a point, you know, we'll know when the, the Lord says stop. Like yesterday, it started raining. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord was like, all right, y'all y'all, did your job. Then it stopped as soon as we turned the camera on. Go ahead. This is Numbers chapter 11, verse 14. And it reads, I am not able... Uh, like verse, talk like verse twenty four. He wants the verse. Well, no, no, he, he wants the. Um, I, I know, I know what you're talking about. Which, where you at? You want the seventy elders, right? Yeah, oh, numbers spirit, eleven. Spirit, yeah, 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 numbers eleven. Yeah, mm -hmm. Twenty five. Okay. Mentioned the prior too. This is um the book of Numbers chapter eleven verse twenty five, and the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him. The Lord came. This is in the wilderness. We're in the wilderness now. Chariots are here. <laughs> Go ahead. Come. The Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took up the spirit that was upon him and gave it up the seven the seventy elders. This is how the heavenly father dispersed the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. Directly through his son who was on that chariot mm -hmm. until starting with Moses. 
in the priesthood. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Come on, come on. It says, and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. They prophesied. So that's the tabernacle of David, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Now let's go to, uh, we're back in Exodus 9. What is some more? Somebody go to Exodus 25. Start at 1. But uh, is it some more 19? Uh, I read 19. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's, let's jump. Because eventually the Lord tells Moses to do something. Right. He said charge the people. That's charge the people. Yep. But then comes the tabernacle. Yep. Go ahead. Did you say Exodus 24? 25 and 1. All right, somebody closer. Okay. Exodus 25 and 1. Yep. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Okay. An offering. Didn't Abel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Lord is the stat. Yeah. He's like, look, he's reestablishing everything. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. It says, Every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye he shall take uh, my offering. Mm -hmm. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them gold and silver and brass. Right. And blue and purple uh -huh. and scarlet and fine linen. Right. And goat's hairs. And because now, 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 where did they get that from? Who, who knows? Where would they have got all of that gold and stuff from? Egypt. Egypt. Remember that they, they left out of Egypt with great substance mm -hmm. for this purpose. Yeah. All right. That's right. That's right. It says when you read it in Exodus, it says, um, let them go right. take these things so they can have a feast unto the Lord. Right. Which is going into the sacrificial right. Right. duties. So we had it in abundance, but it was for a purpose, not to floss, but to build a temple, That's right. to build a tabernacle. Go ahead. Uh, it says, verse five, and ram skin dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood. Oils from the light spices for anointing oil and for sweet incense, mm -hmm. onyx stones and stones to be set in the uh, man, ephod, ephod, uh, ephod yeah. right? So, the, the, he's establishing the priesthood, mm -hmm. he's establishing yeah. the temple, he's telling Moses to build a tabernacle. Now, what was the purpose of the tabernacle? Sacrifices, yeah, but for the Lord to dwell yeah, amongst yeah, right. his mm -hmm. chosen people. Now, jump to verse uh, eight. Okay, verse 8, it says, And let them make me a sanctuary, uh -huh. that I may dwell among them. Let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell That's it. That's the point. among them. Mm -hmm. Dwell among them. That's right. That is what the temple represents. Mm -hmm. The dwelling place of the Most High on earth. That's right. That's right. And as we're going to show you, now that dwelling is right here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the spiritual temple. Mm -hmm. David's still ahead, though. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Can I get a quick precept for you? Yep. This is Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 1 and read down quick. <clears throat> Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the holy calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who was faithful to him we'll that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Woo! For this man was counted, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he had built the house. Excuse me. Inasmuch as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man. Right, every house that we know on the earth started with a man in the flesh. Go ahead. But he that built all things is the most high. Right. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. There you go. And that proves it. That's David. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Tabernacle of Moses, Tabernacle of David. Now, um, keep going. And it's uh, Exodus. Yep, yep. All right, Exodus 9, it says, According to all that I sh uh, showed 25 thee. 25 and 9. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 25, so like 25 and 9. According to all that I showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern. According to all that I show you, this is how you're going to make this tabernacle. Go ahead. It says, In the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, just read a little bit. Because says, what is the purpose? We're going to read the purpose of this, this uh, tabernacle that Moses is going to have Israel to build. Go ahead. Verse 10, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half uh, shall be the length thereof, and the cubit and a half. Started, jump, jump down to uh, 21. Come on, verse, Exodus He's telling them how to make the temple, the ark of the covenant, everything. Go ahead. Come on, Exodus 25 and 21, and thou shalt put the mercy seat above above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. Right. So mercy lies here. 
a testimony lies here. And how do we overcome? Through the blood of Yahweh Shai. That's right. And through the testimony which we we hold. That's it. Go ahead. Verse 22, and, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. So this is how the Lord communes with his people. The, 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 this is a tabernacle being built so the Lord can give Israel an answer on how to move throughout the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And it was all done through a tabernacle which the Lord showed Mo, like Lord, Moses looked into the sky. He looked into the at that temple, that uh, chariot that was there, and the Lord showed him something. Mm -hmm. And the proof that there's a, a, a tabernacle, an altar, and everything, and a high priest in the heavens is Revelation, Revelation eight. Yep. Yep. There's a high, there's a the same thing Aaron did with the the, the incense. There's an angel in the heavens doing that with the prayers of the saints. That's right. That's right, bro. And that's Yahushai. Mm -hmm. That's Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. All a pattern. <laughs> It's a pattern. That's right. That's right, right. right. And according to the law, after sacrifices were made, the, the priest would blow a horn. Mm -hmm. When you read it in Revelation, the fifth chapter, when Yahweh Shai was presented as a lamb that was slain, then the trumpets start getting blown. Right. But you read about that order of it. You know? Right, right. Go ahead. Uh, it says, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony <laughs> of all things, which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Right, mm -hmm. right. Go ahead. Verse 23, thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half. Right, the so he's basically breaking down how to build this tabernacle. Right. He's telling Moses how. Now jump to the last verse in that, that chapter. Uh, verse uh, 40, it says, And I look that thou maketh them after, the, after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. In the mount. It was showed unto Moses how to build this particular temple tabernacle mm -hmm. right which represents the dwelling of the most high which mercy lies there a testimony lies there the urim and the theorem with the high priest even when david was fighting wars remember it would say he would go ask of the lord should he fight the philistine that that's was right. through an order that was that's why the priests were there david the king is he, he had to go to the the priest to see should i keep fighting or should i stop fighting should i do this should i do that mm -hmm. it was through a priesthood it was through an order that's right. Which now we have through the heavens, man. We don't need a physical uh, temple. We don't have to go to Levi. Now we can go to each other. That's right. Access to direct to the most high. You got something? No, I was just thinking about like how David probably would have learned from Saul's mistakes of not inquiring of the Lord. There you happened, go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Saul true. didn't inquire of the Lord. He did. He tried to do his own thing and you lose that way. That's you got to inquire of the Lord. That's right. Yep. Right. Now, um, I got a precept. go ahead. Uh, just to back up the, about asking for guidance. This is a uh, Numbers chapter 27. I'll start at verse 18. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thine hand, and lay thine hand upon him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and get, excuse me, before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Here's the point, verse 21. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before Yahweh. Right. At his word shall they go out, and at his word shall they come in, both right. he and all the children of Israel with him, and even all the congregation. There you go. Even in the wilderness, man, you always hear about Moses in that tabernacle. It was that tabernacle they were setting up as they were on the fly. Yep. Technically, the first Passover wasn't kept in Jerusalem. It was kept in the wilderness. It was kept in the wilderness. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's a solid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It, they had a tabernacle. They like they, you know. Now we are that tabernacle. Yeah, that's right. That's All right, right, but we're just going through the history of the tabernacle and the temple uh, and the relationship of the Most High with this particular line of people. Man, my friends. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. It's in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 11, just to show you that it's amongst men and not the physical ordinances of what was done. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, although I have cast them afar off among the heathen, right. and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them a little sanctuary or a tabernacle in the countries where they shall come. Just going, going to show you right there that you know, we are the tabernacle where we dwell. This is the dwelling place of the Lord, and it's not anything physical. Right. That was just the carnal pattern of what already existed right. in the spirit of things. Right. We got the laws. The Lord gave us the laws. He made a covenant with us, and we broke it. That's right. 
All right, so time passes. All right, we get we get judges, you know, a particular thing. The Lord, there, there, there's times that pass where there's history of Israel, and then there comes David. All right, we're just going to jump to David because what did David have? He had the blueprint on how to build the temple that Solomon built, mm -hmm. which is that. The, so you had the first the tabernacle that Moses built. Yeah. Now we're jumping into the temple that Solomon built, but it was through David. Okay, and this represented what a government sovereignty on earth as it is in heaven on the earth, right? Us governing ourselves. All right, now jump to uh, let me somebody get second edges three and where it mentions David. Start at 221 because it's linked all the way back to Adam, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, second edges three, chapter, chapter three, verse 21. For the first Adam bearing a wicked first heart. Adam. <laughs> he even knew it was another, it's another Adam. Adam that was gonna come. Right, right, right. Adam, he got he messed up as Adam. All right, he messed up as Solomon. All surrounding women and, and, and trying to go up some other way and losing. Yep. But he got it right as your shine. That's right. So now we can get it right. Mm -hmm. He had to get it right first. Go ahead. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. Right, transgressed what? The way. They okay, rebelled against the priesthood. Go ahead. And so be all they that were born of him. Right, born of him. And we know there were a lot of nations born of him, but the one that the Bible was focusing on is the chosen seed. Right, right. right which was, or goes all the way back to Abraham. But go ahead. Thus infirmity was made permanent. Ver Thus, infirmity, us rebelling against that way, us falling from that, that, that tree of life, immortality, was made permanent. Read that again. Uh, uh, for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. Woo! <laughs> Go ahead. And the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root. The stony heart, because mm -hmm. that's what happened at the time of Moses. The law was written on stone. The Lord get, made a marriage with us. He rejoined himself with his chosen seed. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, some more. Go ahead. God. So that the good depart away and the evil both still. Right. Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, read about David. Okay. So the times passed away. The and time the passed away. All right. We... We ain't going to get into all that history. Go ahead. And the years were brought to an end. Uh-huh. Then didst thou raise thee up a servant called David. David. <laughs> now he raised up David. Just like he would raise up Moses. Mm -hmm. Well, first, just like he raised up Abel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he raised up uh, Moses. Abraham. All right. Go ahead. Uh, uh, whom thou commandest. Which Abraham ain't. That ain't the same spirit, but it's the same concept. Because yeah, right. right. Abraham, uh, that's John the Baptist. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But John the Baptist also represented turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts mm -hmm. of the Hebrews. That was a restoration. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name. And to he commanded him to build a city. Read that again. Whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name, uh -huh. and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. When this was done many years, then they that inhabit the city forsook thee. Inhabited the city forsook thee, because Solomon eventually failed. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. And in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done. Right. The same thing Adam did, Solomon did it. <laughs> he fell away. Which led to what? The, the, the splitting of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Us mean, being absolutely alienated from one another as the, the northern and southern kingdom. Babylon, yep. Babylon Assyria, the yep. northern tribes coming over here and losing their goddamn mind. Sacrificing children, eating flesh. <laughs> Completely detached. But that, that was a put it all. It, it started with Adam first, then it was through Solomon. Go ahead. So now we're going to get into David. What did David do? He uh, conquered Israel. Nah, what did he, 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 there was a temple built. Oh, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. Time. Is, is some more? Or is that? Uh, no. All right, now let's jump to, uh, 
First Chronicles 17. All right. This is uh, First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 1. It says, Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars. Now, there's a whole lot of history that you got to know. But eventually, remember, David got the Ark of the Covenant back from the, the, the heathen who had it, the Philistines. Yeah. He was first anointed king in Hebron, where he ruled about seven yep. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but there came a point where they got the Ark of the Covenant back, but it was just chilling in particular places. They, they moved it from Obed Edom's house to this place. Mm -hmm. to that. Now, then they had it sitting you know, and what did the Ark of the Covenant? That represents the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. The Ark of the Covenant, where the Lord's connection and promise to his people lies. Go ahead. Verse 2, it says, Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, right. for the Most High is with thee. Right. David was like, look, the, how the, the Ark of the Lord is just sitting under the cedar. I want to, we got to build a temple. I want to build a temple. He had his mind to build a temple. Go ahead. And it came to pass the same night that the word of the Most High came to Nathan saying, Go and tell David my servant, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house in dwell, uh, to dwell in. And you ain't going to do it. <laughs> you ain't going to do it. Right. Right? Because why? Go ahead. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day. Uh, I'm going to read that again. It says, now, well, read that same scripture in NLT as well. All right. It says, uh, this is uh, 1 Chronicles 17 and 5. It says, for I have not dwelt in an house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from brought tent up Israel to tent. Where? But has gone from tent to tent. Go ahead. And from one tabernacle to another. From one tabernacle to another. Now read it in the NLT. All right. That same scripture. He said, I ain't dwelt in a house since. Go ahead. All right. This is uh, 1 Chronicles 17 and 4. It says, go tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. You are not the one to build a house for me to live in. I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt unto this very day. The tabernacle. Yep. <laughs> go ahead. Yep. My home has always been a tent. Moving from one place to another amongst, in a tabernacle. Amongst particular men who would do right. <clears throat> okay. And you know, we had to go ahead. Yep. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's leaders, the shepherds of my people. I have never asked them, why, have, uh, why haven't you built me a beautiful right, cedar house? Because it's only going to be built through a particular order that I want it to be built through. Right. So, so go ahead. Right now, go and say to my servant David, "This is what the Lord of uh, Heaven's armies has declared." This is what the Lord declared. I, David needed mercy. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yep. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be a leader of my people just, Israel. Just like Abel, yep. he was a keeper of the sheep. David was a keeper of the sheep. Moses Peter, was a keeper was of the sheep. Moses was a keeper of the sheep. <laughs> Peter was a keeper. What did he say? Peter, feed yep. my sheep. Yep. Feed my sheep. Three times. Go ahead. Yep. Verse 8, it says, I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth. Yes, man. As anybody that's lived on the earth? That's a bold statement. statement. But his position, he was going to be a regular. But he's going to just be in the exactly, kingdom. Exactly, right. He's going to gonna be in the back somewhere. Mm, mm, no, mm. he's going to be the, the 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 first in command. That's right. And I believe next is John, maybe. I look, I, I John, uh, uh, so too, John, man. that's Yahweh's favorite. He may be next, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Well, but we know that, you know, the, the, the 12 are going to take their course. <laughs> the three of the transfiguration. Right. Yeah, that matters. Right. Go That's ahead. Right. That's All right. right. This is uh, verse nine. It says, and I will provide a homeland for my people, Israel, mm. planting them in the secure place where they will never be disturbed. Right. Evil nations won't oppress them as they've done in the past. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. All right. You want to go back to the uh, K K KJV? KJV. Yep. 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 Go ahead. So he's letting them know, look, man, y'all go, we're going to be good because we're going to return unto the, that we're going to return unto paradise, man. Eventually, under under Adam, second Adam. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to start back at uh, verse 6. It says, Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to, the, uh, to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, 
Have ye not built me a house of cedars? Right. Now therefore, thus shall say, uh, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from a sheep coat. Jump even, to verse nine. All right, verse nine. It says, Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Right. This is prophecy. Mm -hmm. But we know Solomon came and gave us a prelude to that. Through what forty years of peace? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. Neither shall the children of Israel, uh, neither shall the children of wickedness, waste them any more, as at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house. A house. Yep. Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. All right, but this is a spiritual one. Go ahead. Yep. And it shall come to pass. When thy days be expired, that thou must uh, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, mm -hmm. which shall be of thy sons. Which shall be of thy sons, which is Solomon. Go ahead. And I will establish his kingdom. I will establish his kingdom. Now, is it, go, go down. Go ahead. All right. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. Throne of ever. And what is that throne? The throne of David. That's right. The government. That's right. His order. The Most High's order starts with Yahweh Shai and then David. Mm -hmm. That's the church, the beloved. Go ahead. I will be his father and he shall be my son. And I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So, but, so, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, I will settle, but I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever. Mm -hmm. And his so. throne shall be established forevermore. Mm -hmm. According to all these words and according to all this vision, right. so did Nathan speak unto David. So David had his mind, I got to build a temple. The Lord said, no, you too bloody. You did too much. You need mercy. Your son going to build the temple. Huh. Now let's jump to verse 20, chapter 22. First Chronicles uh, chapter 22. All right. Whoever, you know. What verse? To start at one. Okay. First Chronicles 22 and one. It says, then David said, this is the house of Yahweh, your power. And this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. Mm -hmm. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he set masons to hew rock stones to build the house of the most high. Right. Now jump down to verse uh, six. Verse six. Then he called for Solomon, his son, and charged him to build a house for Yahweh, the power of Israel. He, he charged Solomon to do that. Go ahead. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house mm -hmm. unto, the, unto the name of Yahweh, my power. Mm -hmm. Now, what does the house represent, brothers? The dwelling the of the most, the, most high. the most high being present amongst his chosen people. God. Go ahead. But the word of Yahweh came to me saying... Thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house. But even, even Uriah, mm -hmm. the Hittite, yep. Yep. you know, and there were other men who were slew too right. at that time that was precious unto the Lord. Absolutely. So David needed mercy. His mercy was through Solomon, mm -hmm. just like our mercy is through Yahweh Shai. Yeah, yeah. The mercies of David. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was going to say, you remember when he numbered Israel, yep. there was thousands and thousands of Israelites that right. died by the sin that David did. did right. You know, right. just want to add that to so the mercy. He mercies. needed mercy, bro. Yeah. We need mercy. That's, that's another, right. I would say that's mercy. another time. Uh, that's another time. Yahweh Shai and Abel was on the planet again together. Yeah. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just, the roles were reversed. Right. But it was still the same concept. concept. Mm -hmm. There you yeah. go. There you go. Mercy sees within the dwelling. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. That's it. Go ahead. Uh, back in First Chronicles 22 and 8, it says, But the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Mm -hmm. verse, uh, verse 9, it says, Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon. Mm. And I will... Uh, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Mm -hmm. He shall build a house for my name. There you go. And he shall be my son, and I will be his father. Right. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Forever. All right. Now go to uh, First Chronicles uh, twenty-eight and start at uh, three. This is First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse three. 
And it reads, but the most high said unto me, that shall not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, mm -hmm. and hast shed blood. Mm -hmm. Howbeit, Yahweh, God of Israel, chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Mm -hmm. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father. Mm. And among <laughs> the sons of my father, he likened me to make me king over all Israel. There you go. He go, he go take his kingship. But who whose mercy was needed to establish that throne? Right. Solomon. Mm -hmm. Solomon had to build it. Come. That's the mercies of David that we have received. Go ahead. Did you, did, if I may, did you, did you peep where in verse 4 it says that uh, it says that he had showed me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever? Forever. Mm -hmm. But he's just going to be a normal leader. Right. David exactly. is king forever. It's just that Yahweh Shah is king of kings. That's it. Right. Yahweh Shah it. establishes that's, his that's order, his right. rank mm -hmm. establishes the rest of the kings. Mm -hmm. But who's number one king? Right. It's just it's, it's just like how you have Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Everything is under Yahweh Shai yeah. except for Yahweh. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. King David's gonna be king of all Israel under Yahweh Shai. That's right. He's gonna be under Yahweh Shai like Yahweh Shai is under Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But what's been given to him, like okay, David is basically sitting on the right hand of Yahweh Shai. That's right. it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You see? Mm -hmm. It makes me Thanks. think about uh, Michael the Archangel as well. Uh, he in there, he up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There you go. There you go. It's always been a hierarchy. Yep, that's right. This that's right. is um First Chronicles twenty eight and five, and all of my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons. He had chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and right. I will be his father. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Moreover, I will establish. You got. You got something from that? What you? What you? Hmm. What you thinking? Uh, uh, shit. You the son of Yahweh. That's the you son know? of the Most High. Mm -hmm. I will be your son. Uh, right. I think it's in the New Testament too. Yeah. You know? This is my beloved son, mm -hmm. whom I am well pleased with. So David knew this is the son of the Most High. <laughs> he got it. it. That's it. Man, the Lord said unto my Lord. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's in songs. The covenant made with David was that look. The one who's going to build a house and establish, he's going to come from you. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine being told that. Come on, man. Like, whoa. When you read the rest of uh, the uh, the previous chapter we were reading, First Chronicles 17, David was like, how did, me? Right. He's like, how did I, like, who am I, like, to, to receive this this great, you know. Mm -hmm. He just started like, damn, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because just imagine, you like, all right, I'm going to build a temple for the Lord. Like, no, your son that come from you. He gonna do it. That's right. You still be like, okay? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's legacy. That's legacy. Yeah, that's legacy. legacy. That's right. right. That's now right. jump to uh, verse ten in Second Chron First Chronicles twenty eight and ten. This is First Chronicles twenty eight and ten. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. This is David talking to Solomon. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Be strong and do it. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch. The pattern. David gave yeah. Solomon the pattern. <laughs> now, who was that pattern showed to on Moses. earth? Moses. Moses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yep. But David is 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 giving him the pattern. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And of the houses thereof, and of the treasuries thereof, <coughs> and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat. The mercy seat. Wasn't that in the, the, the first tabernacle Absolutely. Moses built? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go ahead. And of the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord. By the spirit. How mm -hmm. did he get it by the spirit? Because it was shown to Moses. That's right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Right. That's right. That's, yep. how, that's how Peter knew Yahweh was the son of the Most High. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Flesh and blood had not revealed this to you. Yeah. Right. But it came yeah. through the spirit. Right. That's right. 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 Go ahead. Quick precept. This is uh, First Chronicles twenty-eight. I'm gonna I'm jump over jump verse down, nineteen. Yeah. Oh, you did? No, you got it. I mean, you you got it, bro. No. I'm gonna jump over to verse nineteen. It says, "All this," said David. Yahweh made me understand in writing by His hand upon me. His, he, his he put His hand upon me. Mm -hmm. Now Moses walked with the Most High. Yep. Enoch walked with the Most High too, mm -hmm. right? So th what does that mean? He showed them particular. Not saying they're the same spirit. Because the sons of God all have this relationship. Absolutely. But it's through an order that you have this relationship. Mm -hmm. Where the Lord, he's walking with us now. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's showing us things that nobody else on the planet Earth 
knows, man. That's right. That's right. Or sees. Like, they don't see what we see. They may certain people even know shit's messed up, but they can't link it all together and tell you what's, what's next. That's right. That's like we were talking about how uh with the, uh with the videos that get cut. The right. only ones they that, that, that that's, that's really getting cut to the point to where it's ridiculous is the ones that can be backed up with scripture. Right. right. Everything else is just information that's right. floating out there. Right. You know, right. They'll the let Willie D curse out the jab. Yeah. Let us, <laughs> let us go into the image of the beast with the jab. Yeah. Oh, nigga, uh -uh. Hell no. Because right. they there's a different yeah. presence that they're right. like, oh shit, not nah, too much. Yeah, yeah, right. Two right. weeks, buddy. Right. That's right. Two years. <laughs> that's, that's also showing you the validity of the scriptures. Because mm -hmm. there's no other source of information that goes in this, and that shows you why these devils are so offended yeah. when these precepts are tied to his agenda. Right. Showing you how powerful the scriptures really are. Right. Say, Bro, you control the world, you control the media, the earth has been given into your hand, and it's still a Bible right here yeah, in everybody's house. Mm -hmm. You a trillionaire in straits. How do you have that much wealth in your straits? You don't. You, you're a demon. We're, we're we're the only ones that need to have that type of influence oh, and control. You. That's right. Because we do the right thing with it. Right. That's, right, That's why they're coming against the men. The Lord don't want us to talk about the jab because they see the image of the Lord in us. Right. That's right. The That's image right. of the beast is, so is right. Yeah. He tears down the image of the beast through the, his image, which he's yeah. establishing in us. That's right. Let's keep reading a little bit, and then we're going to jump uh, to, a, to something else. Go ahead. Oh shit, that's why I, I was gonna read down to that, but you got it. Oh, well, if you Because where where were we in First Chronicles twenty eight? Yeah, we was yeah. in twenty eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we well, no, nah, you 10. go ahead, go ahead, just because well, that's the point. That's the point. Go ahead. Read. I have a brother that's close to the, to the phone. Read now. I know you saw him, so you was there. I know. So you want verse ten or eleven read again, or just twenty nine? I'm first. You just read eleven. Read eleven again. Okay. This is back in First Chronicles chapter twenty eight, verse eleven. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof. Now read, somebody read uh, Exodus, what was that, Exodus 25? Yeah. yeah that's in the last weird. verse. Just that's read it weird. again. I literally had that help. Just just, just yeah. read that so y'all can really understand what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Exodus 25, verse 40, it says, And look that thou make them after their pattern. The pattern. Mm -hmm. Moses was to make a tabernacle according to the pattern. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which was showed thee in the mount. When the chariot came. Mm -hmm. Man. Wow. Well, he <laughs> saw the priest like doing his duty. He saw the tabernacle in the heavens. He opened the Lord, showed Moses that. But it was so heavy that when he came down, he was glowing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Where we at? Let's read down. Just keep reading down. This is verse 11 in First Chronicles 28. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof, and of the treasuries thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, mm -hmm. and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, and of the treasuries of the house of the Most High, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Right, dedicated. The priesthood. The, 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 go, go to jump to 18 real quick. This is verse 18. And for the altar of incense, refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims. The cherubims did not Moses have the cherubims too? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That spread out their wings mm -hmm. and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Mm. And if I may, because again we're going into the pattern of things that's established in the heavens. When you read it, I believe it's in Isaiah five. Isaiah is having a vision of the heavenly tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And you read it, it goes into where he said he saw the Heavenly Father sitting and it says his train or his garment filled up the whole tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And then it said there was two angels that sat on the side with the wings covering his face and the wings covering his feet. Mm -hmm. So it's showing you that that was actually a physical That's expression of what's taking place in the heavens with the angels standing next to the throne. There you go. The wings covering it. It's a heavy, you know? it's heavy, bro. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, come, come. Now keep going. Verse, um, verse 18. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, verse 18. And for the altar of incense refined by gold by weight and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Right. All this, saith David, Yahweh made me understand and writing by his hand upon me. There you even go. all the works of this pattern. <laughs> this pattern. Mm -hmm. Right. So Solomon built a temple on Mount Moriah. Somebody type in Moriah in the scriptures. On Mount Moriah, this temple was built. And it represented the dwelling place of the Most High, man. 
So we go through various histories and what do we find? You know, this temple was always the center of how the Israelites would get back in good graces with the Most High. Mm -hmm. so, Scripture in 2 Chronicles 3. Yep. yep, go ahead. It says 2 Chronicles 3 and 1, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem and Mount Moriah. At Mount Moriah. Now, what, what, uh, Shapal, what, what, what's another thing that happened on Mount Moriah that you can think of? If you don't know, it's okay. That's to do with Moses, right? No. 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 Yeah. yeah. Right. That's where Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got so, that Mount word. Moriah. Uh -huh. I got that word right. And that's where the temple was. Uh, go ahead. So, like, so like it's going. Uh, that word, uh, H4179. It says chosen, it means chosen by Yahweh. How do you say it in the Hebrew? Uh, Mariah. Uh, Mariah? Yeah, ma, ma, Mariah. Okay. okay. Mawaria. Mawaria. Excuse me, sorry. Go ahead. It says chosen by Yahweh, the place where Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice, the mount on the eastern edge of Jerusalem. Hey, we should be able to look at these characters and know how to read these things by now, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We need to, I mean, we, we scholars, man. I mean... Just know how to read the Hebrew a little. Just, just get into it to a point where you can look at it, and even though you struggle with it, ma, you, you'll be. But you, you can sound, sound it out eventually. Time, we should be able to do that. If, you know, that's with scholars. We're teaching the people characters. You know, now you don't have to be a scholar in the Hebrew, <laughs> but get a, get in the point of when you look up these words in the Hebrew. Don't let it play. Strong's H. Uh -uh. Nah, because they going they, off. They going off and they you sound it off right. in the right Hebrew, to, in, yeah, exactly. and, so right. and you get in the practice of that, and you'll start, you know, knowing That's how right. to read it. Yeah. Go That's ahead. Right. It says, uh, "The mount on the eastern edge of Jerusalem, on which Solomon built the temple." There you go. On the east. On the east, Mount Moriah. That's where Isaac That's was going to be sacrificed by Abraham, but then a lamb came when he sacrificed that lamb. And that's where the temple that David gave Solomon the pattern, and the blueprint to build. That's right. You know? Man, and he received that vision right after he did his third transgress, like number of Israel. Yep. When, there when you go. Was, I was, oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, you I had that written, but no. nah, I didn't even think, I didn't bring it out. But that's, yeah, yeah, just, that's, as a, just when the Lord was smacking Israel, you know, David, that's where he went to and surrendered himself you know, to the will of the Heavenly Father. He said, I'm sorry. He, he repented. He repented, and that, that, Smack down of a revelation was given unto David right. right up there after he went the fuck off. Right, his firstborn was killed. Yeah. Then Solomon came. Yep, yep. Yayadya. Mm -hmm. Nathan called him Yayadya, beloved of the Most High. That's right. Showing you, look, this is the mercy. You good through him. Mm -hmm. Your son. Yep. Wow. Heavy. That's heavy. Now, where were we at? First Chronicles, the third chapter, going into. Um, oh, yeah, I was just going how Solomon. He built it. He built, yep, he built the temple. I mean, there's so many intricacies that we can go into into the temple that, you know, because what's the history of it? Eventually, the Babylonian, once Solomon sinned, mm -hmm. we went into eventually the Assyrian, you know, there were years that went by then we went into the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. Mm -hmm. What did they do? They sacked the temple. Somebody get 2nd Edges 10 real quick and jump to like the... Uh, and Esau, we'll just, go ahead. It's gonna say, and after that happened, Esau was being raised back up in Egypt. Where right. He heard news, and right. He came back into his position. He heard the news. We fell. Yeah. That's right. 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 That's right. Right. So that temple was always the center. Josiah. What did he do? They cleansed the temple. Hezekiah mm -hmm. cleansed the temple. All right. Which Hezekiah is David as well. I believe. So. <laughs> I, believe. I, believe. I believe. I. I think I heard. The, I don't know. I think I heard the apostle say that Salakia. But that ultimately it was always. Whenever a, a righteous leader stood up, it was always surrounding the temple mm -hmm. being rebuilt and cleansed. That's right. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, where we at? He said 2nd chapter 10. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yep, yep. Go ahead. You get it. 2nd Edward chapter 10. And verse that's my man. That's it. In verse that's right. uh, 21. For thou seest that our sanctuary is laid waste, mm -hmm. our altar is broken down. Our temple destroyed. Go ahead. Read, read, read. read it again. Second Edges chapter ten and verse twenty one. For thou seest that our sanctuary is laid waste. Mm -hmm. Our altar is broken down. Mm -hmm. Our temple destroyed. Our temple destroyed. Our temple destroyed. Right? Who destroyed it? The Babylonians. Mm -hmm. 
Right? Go ahead. Verse 22. Our poultry is laid on the ground. Sultries. Sal Slot. <laughs> Our sultries is laid on the ground. Our song is put to silence. Our rejoicing is at an end. The light of our candlestick is put out. Right, right. And that's why it says it, if I may, in, um, in um, Psalms 137, yeah. it says, um, in the midst of um, Babylon, yeah. there we laid our harps yeah. down to rest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Going into how we was going to be brought to the low state, the land of Babylon in our captivity. You know, the, that, that music, the psalteries and the harps represent that mirth. And it's right, us, our yeah, singing praises unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because what did David set up when he first got into power? A choir. choir. The, the Levites to sing mm -hmm. praises unto the Lord. That's right. Go ahead. Middle of verse 22. The Ark of the Covenant is spoiled. Our holy things are defiled. Mm -hmm. And the name that is called upon us is almost profane. Mm -hmm. Our children are put to shame. Our priests are burnt. Our Levites are gone into captivity. Our virgins are defiled. Our wives are ravished. Our righteous men carried away, our little ones destroyed, our young men are brought into bondage, and our strong men are become weak. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, and which is the greatest of all? The, the seal of Zion has now lost her honor. The seal of Zion, which is the tabernacle of David, you know, has lost his honor. Go ahead. For she is delivered into the hands of them that hate us. Verse 24. And therefore, shake off thy great heaviness right. and put away the multitude of sorrows. Right, so there came a point where the temple was sacked. And we'll get into a little bit of that. And then uh, we'll end it. Um, go to the book of, uh, somebody go to uh, Haggai 1. We'll start at 1. Because there came a point where after the Babylonian t captivity, the Lord had favor on us and allowed us to rebuild that temple. With who? Who was the first? Who was at the head of that? We're going we to get it. We're going to get it. But who did it start with? Real quick. If anybody knows. Can you ask the question again? Who, at the time of the rebuilding of the temple, who, yeah, but who cursed out the Ruba Bell? Oh, it was Haggai. It was Haggai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haggai. Haggai. Yeah. Haggai That's, and, uh, yeah. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna get through this part and then we're gonna do a part two, you know, because there's a there, there's a spiritual temple as well that is gonna be built through Yahweh Shine. We go we ain't gonna get into that today. We're just gonna deal with Zerubbabel re being the head of rebuilding that temple. Go to Haggai one. Right. Yep. It's Haggai chapter one. Verse one. Somebody get Ezra two and one. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahweh. Because there was a point where Cyrus gave a decree, mm -hmm. but then it was like he 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 started listening to the reports and yep. Yep. he stopped it. It That's came right. ceased. And then at the time of Darius. He put out an order. He didn't listen to it. Even though they came with the same shit, he didn't really listen. He allowed us to finish kind of like a rebuild. So there's a lot of history, but it's we're just going to, we just, there's a lot of history, but it's and, crucial. But it's all surrounding this temple. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yes, you know, this dwelling of the Most High, which we now have through the Holy Spirit, Rokhach That's right. Woo! Go ahead. Uh, in the middle of verse 1 in Haggai chapter 1, by the utmost of the Lord's by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the right. son of Shephat. Start over, start over at one. Haggai chapter 1 and 1. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahweh uh -huh. by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shethel, uh -huh. governor of, of Judah. Governor of Judah. This is David. Zerubbabel is David. Uh -huh. Right? And he's at the forefront of the rebuilding. Now, somebody real quick, hold that. Somebody get Ezra 2 and 1 through 2. Okay. This is the book of Ezra, chapter 2, starting at verse 1. It says, Now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those which had been carried away. And where were we carried away to? With the Babylonians. Right? That's where this temple was sacked. 
this great temple that Solomon built mm -hmm. by the blueprint David gave him and was eventually sacked by the heathen because they knew if we can separate them from this, we good. That's right. right. That's right. We needed this temple. We needed this tabernacle at one point, which was all a symbolism of something greater, man. Mm -hmm. It's known. It was known amongst the heathen that if you can get that temple, right. you can get them jakes. Right. Now, the Persians, they didn't take that stance. The Persians and the Medes, well, the per start with the Medes. It was the, it was the Persians. Persians oh, yeah, first, Salakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start with it. They, they um, basically, they were like, we could just make them a vassal. Mm -hmm. We'll let them build their temple so because the Lord just put a spirit on Cyrus yep, right, yep. to make the decree for us to build it. Isaiah 45. Right. Isaiah, he prophesied it at the time of Isaiah 45. Yeah, they, they they better for us. If we if we let them do their thing, they'll be more prosperous for us. Right, right. Instead of just putting hell on them. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, making right. them want to rebel. That's right, right, that's right. 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 Yes. So uh, he called Cyrus his anointed. Right. Go ahead. Um, Ezra 2 and 1, it says, Now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon, and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, everyone unto, the, unto his city. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Ezra, uh, go ahead, what's that? It says, Which came with Zerubbabel, Jesuit. They came with Zerubbabel. That he was the, the first one mentioned. Mm -hmm. They came with him. David, Moses, <laughs> Man. he back, he's back <laughs> to do what? Go back to Jerusalem and rebuild this temple. Right up. Go ahead. Verse two, it says, which came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah. That's a different Nehemiah too. This That's not the same Nehemiah that you read in the book of Nehemiah. Oh, God. Just to okay. give y'all a heads up. Okay. God. It says, Reeliah. More See, that's a that's the way he we we getting this information. This is a connection, man. Mm -hmm. That brother, that's a connection that the Lord got with that brother to just give us that because we would have been nearby. We'd be on the highway, See, going, the same yeah, going all the way. Yeah. 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 It, it also goes to show you common See? names, right? Common, common names. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I want to say you got. I want to say you got. A, you got a few Yashawamas running around Israel. You got a, you got a few these and that you know what I'm saying. Right, it's right, the same right. thing back then, and you got to know the difference between the two. Well, you had at the time of uh, 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 Cain and Abel that those lines through Seth. Yeah, they had a lot of. It was two Enochs. It was two Lamechs. Two Lamechs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lamech. You got Noah's dad. You got yeah, Noah's exactly. dad in the mixtape Messiah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Miss Parr. So, like so that's it. So yeah. jump to uh, Haggai three and I mean Haggai uh, Ezra three and one. It's the book of Ezra. And this three. Ezra is the same as Ezra's mm -hmm. in the in the Apocrypha. Right. Same mm -hmm. person. Go ahead. Ezra Priest. three and one. And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. To Jerusalem, <laughs> where the yeah. temple was at. Yeah. Garden of Eden. It's all centered. There's a vibration going on there that's very important to us. Right, right. But right now we ain't there. And right now we don't have a actual temple. We can't go to Levi. We we deal in directly through the spirit, but we'll get to that in part two. Go ahead. Verse two. Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shatal. Mm -hmm. And his brethren and built the altar of the Most High of Israel. Altar. Yep. <laughs> That's the first thing that they had built up. That's the first thing they built up. Mm hmm. Without that sack. That's Josiah, right? They got him going back to rebuild that temple. So what? Folks. Josiah? No, that ain't Josiah. Okay, so Josiah came way yeah, later. Came Josiah was actually the last king of that line through Zerubbabel that did right. That was through, that was the loins of the yeah, Zerubbabel was mentioned. In Yahweh shot somebody get that in uh Matthew one. So like Fine. Josh, I'm sorry. So Go like ahead. I was gonna say um Josiah Josiah was a little before that because this is after the exile. Remember he um right. Oh, yeah yeah yeah. But this I is continuing. Was talking, so like it. This is continuing that line. Got it, got it. Yeah. Right. This is sure. continuing that line. Well, hang out the first chapter. I thought it was uh Josiah. You said Matthew one. Matthew one and okay, read yeah, the book Oh, it's oh you're going to the lineage. lineage. Okay, okay, Just I to see show it. you that okay. these that we're reading a king's lineage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is what this is all about. Facts. A nation of kings and priests. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Right, but it just starts with these. This, uh, you know, mm -hmm. at the time of Yahweh it was Peter. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just reading about. Go ahead. Kind of, yeah, like you said, Josiah being the last king. Uh, um, uh, Matthew one and uh, eleven, and Josiah begat uh, Jeconiah and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah the son of Shaaltiel, excuse me, Jeconiah, Jeconiah begat. Uh, Shealtiel and Shealtiel begat Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, yep, yep. great, great yep. grandson, and that's in the lineage of Yahweh. That's right. Mm -hmm. that so time. we're reading about the literal lineage of Yahweh, but right. it's all accompanied to a temple, man, right? Facts, mm -hmm. a tabernacle. It's all you know. Go ahead. Now, where were we at? Ezra three. Yep. And verse two, it says, "Then stood up Jeshua the son of Josedek and his brethren the priests, and Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel." And his brethren and builded the altar of the Most High unto, of Israel. Man, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna say it. No, it did. <laughs> no, no, it, it just makes me think. Of, it just makes me think of Moses and Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I gotta say, I, I didn't. You know. No. Nah. Go ahead. It says to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. It says verse three, and they set the altar upon his bases. For fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. Man, now there's an altar in the midst of the land of Egypt. It mentioned Moses again, too. It yeah. sure did. Ooh. <laughs> read, go back and read that part yeah, about read Moses that, again. Yeah. Sure sure did. It says, And builded the altar of the Most High of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Come on now. <laughs> the Ruba, yeah. The Ruba bells ahead of it. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Verse 3. And they set the altar upon his bases, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings there, thereon unto Yahweh, even burnt offerings morning and evening. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written. The Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles represents in the wilderness. That's they were right. walking around That's with right. that, yeah. that, uh, that tabernacle. Mm -hmm. They were intense. They were intense, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Represent we're covered. Yep, and it was unlawful to be of a sorrowful spirit. Yep, it was Especially. mandatory to be have a joyful heart. Right, because Jake would they were separated from Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. Go ahead. Verse four. They kept also the feast of tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, as the duty of every day required. Mm -hmm. And afterward, offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of Yahweh that were consecrated. And of everyone that so like it, and of everyone that willingly offered a free will offering unto Yahweh. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto Yahweh, but the foundation of the temple of Yahweh was not yet laid. Just like at the time of Moses, they were leaving, they were they they took all of that gold and stuff from Egypt and did what? They brought it as an offering to build the temple. That's right. <laughs> Which is all a physical manifestation of something all the way higher, which we'll get in the next video, but keep going. We'll get a few more things and we'll close out. Uh, keep going. Verse 7. They gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil. Unto now, them of I'm going to ask y'all this. Who with, uh, with Zerubbabel rebuilding this temple, where can we go in the scriptures and get how this temple was supposed to be built? Somebody get Ezekiel 43 for and 10 sure, for sure. Real quick Because Sakari is saying this is the kingdom yeah. This was actually given uh, The Lord showed Jake That second temple That's in it. his perfection That's it. Mm -hmm. If it was to be in his perfection This was how you were to build it to This was what you were supposed to do mm -hmm. Every set the priest in their course and all of that This ain't talking about the kingdom No nah, it's absolutely not No nah. Uh, 40, Ezekiel 43 and 10. We'll just get okay. a few out of that and then uh, we'll get a few more and we'll close out. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 10. It says, This is years before the Persians said rebuild the temple. Mm -hmm. But this is the blueprint of how to. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 43 and 10. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. Show them. Go ahead. And let them measure the pattern. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it's ironic, that's right? It. The irony of that. Right. The pattern. The pattern. Mm. Right. 
and if they be ashamed at uh, and if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings in thereof, mm -hmm. and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight. Write it in their sight. Mm -hmm. So this is how Israel was eventually had a blueprint on how to rebuild that temple. Mm -hmm. Is it some more? Uh, in that verse, yeah, it says, And write it in their sight, that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and do them. Right. So this is how we were had, to, had a, the Lord restored in us a right. way to rebuild that temple. That's right. That's right. And is the Rubabel was the beginning of the rebuilding of that temple. That's right. That's right. All right. And eventually, uh, let's go to Haggai. Let's finish that out. We'll get Haggai uh, 2 and 21 and then that's it. Got it. Everybody get Haggai 1 and start at 1. And on, from what I'm pulling that yep. out, just to, just to say too, when that when that second temple was being rebuilt, that blueprint we read in Ezekiel was the actual like they had those to know how to do it, just like as it was commanded, how David had the blueprint to have the first temple built. The Spirit of the Lord had Ezekiel to have that written down so they could have that blueprint to construct the second temple. There you go. You know what I'm saying? That is the actual blueprint. What they read and looked at mm -hmm. to organize the yeah. second temple. And Dan was still mentioned. It still dealt with cleansing. It still dealt with uh, right. death. Mm -hmm. So that's how you know that ain't talking about the kingdom. Right. That's right. right. Exactly. This was a blueprint on how to rebuild that temple mm -hmm. that they eventually got and did it. That's right. Because they were going to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heavy, heavy, heavy. He went, wow. to captivity. he went to captivity on, Ezekiel went to captivity like around the second, the second campaign. Of right. There were mm -hmm. three campaigns, I believe, right? Yeah, so yep. this is almost a hundred years. This is almost 100 years before. Absolutely. They, they even went back to uh, That's right. right. So That's the right. Lord set up a man to get a vision on how to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. This is the course. This is the order, you know. Yeah, man. Ezekiel's nice. heavy, bro. That's heavy. Yeah, bro. man. <laughs> you got to know the history. Like the apostles have yeah. been saying, you got to know the history to understand the mystery. Mm -hmm. You can't be pulling things out your ass thinking that you're trying to sound deep. Right. Yeah, read that again. Haggai, Haggai 1 and 1. In the, in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet mm -hmm. unto Zerubbabel. Unto Zerubbabel. Mm -hmm. Sown in Babylon. <laughs> Sown in Babylon. He was like, look, get your asses up. Mm -hmm. The spirit always gets cursed out. Man. He got cursed out as Moses. He got cursed out as David. Mm -hmm. You know, he got uh, cursed out as Peter. Mm -hmm. He got cursed That's out as a rumor mill. You point. know, <laughs> go ahead. Straight up. The son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Dosity, the high priest of Sain, thus, thus speaketh the Howl of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come, the time that the, that your house, house should be built. See? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Mind if I just, just, expound, just expound on this? The reason why it says that too, because you had certain Israelites around that time period that was literally expecting the 70th year after their exile to start building. Right. This was around like year 63 to 65. So you had Jake get a little complacent because they're waiting on the exact 70th year. They had their year. little houses and apartments yeah. and shit. They was catching hell, you know, dealing with things. But in their mind, they're like, well, the Lord said 70 years, but it ain't 70 right. years yet. And they were scared kind of like they knew the people would come up against them. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. were kind of like, man, let's not stir up nothing. Let's just right. chill. That's right. But the Lord's like, no. Mm -hmm. Get your ass up. That's through, right. Through Haggai. That's right. Haggai galvanized Jake at that time to get in the spirit to rebuild. He's like, look, mm -hmm. there's an order to rebuild it. That's right. The Lord with us, get your ass up. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> Same oh, thing now. You know what I'm saying? That brother is. Man, yeah. you know, oh, you know, he probably. Hey, I have something in mind, but I, I'll say it off you know, camera. Jake like a mug. I always say as a joke, Haggai acted as a spiritual alarm clock to Jake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just Pope like John. Look at a party. Hey, that's a good point. Wow. Go ahead. Uh, Haggai uh, one and three. Then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet, saying, "It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your." Cecile? Yeah, Cecile, Cecile, and that's wood. Mm -hmm. Jake was chilling in their own houses, mm -hmm. trying to forward their way. Like, all right, we we got out of captivity. Yeah. How I'm gonna forward my what I'm gonna do? How I'm gonna set this up? I'm gonna set that up. 
what's next for me, mm-hmm. for me, for me. You know? Yeah. It is time for you. Oh, you the Jake chilling. got a little freedom. Mm-hmm. And they were chilling. It was chilling. Bro. But the Lord was like, no, now <laughs> we can rebuild, let's rebuild this house. Done. <laughs> That's true. <right. laughs> it's so much. And wait, man, next week, Lord willing, we'll just do that part too. But wait till it's all so many correlations. Absolutely. Bro. Go ahead. It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses. Mm-hmm. In this house, like in these house, lie waste. What's these house? The, 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 this house is ultimately the temple. The temple. So you go chill and forge your own bull, but you ain't gonna rebuild the temple. That's what I'm saying. And, and, and that was the thing. Like now is the time where we can. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, got out of captivity. Right. I was like, that, that the, the same thing that's making you want to chill should be the same thing that's making right. you want to go ahead and build it. This up. is where the dwelling yeah. of the Lord lies. Yeah. Why yeah. not do this? Yeah. You're gonna be you're gonna reap abundance after you do Let's this. Let's offer up a sacrifice. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we're doing. Straight up. Straight up. Go ahead. Verse five. Now therefore, thus said the how of hosts, consider your ways. Consider Examine your yourself. ways. Examine yourself. <laughs> yep. I know, right? Man. Yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. Verse 6. Ye have sown so much and bring in little. Right, you doing all of this shit trying to forge your own lives. Mm-hmm. But look, you losing. You losing. Losing. Turn to the Lord, bro. Rebuild the temple. Now jump to uh, Haggai 2. Start at the first chapter. Though, and start at 1 real quick. Chapter uh, 2 and 1 in Haggai. In the seventh month in the... In the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of Yahweh by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel. Speak now to Zerubbabel. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's build this temple. Yep. He always had to do it. Yep. That spirit always had to be at the forefront of building the temple, bro. Yep. Go ahead. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shethel, governor of Judah. Into the into Joshua, the son of Joseph. Man, didn't it say in Isaiah nine, the Lord will set up a government, and then mm-hmm. He mentioned the throne of David. Sure. Go, go ahead. The high priest into the residue of the people, saying, no, no. "Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory?" Who's left amongst you that remember the old temple? Mm-hmm. Few, few of them saw it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Few of them saw the temple <laughs> Solomon actually built. They sure did. Go ahead, and it's like you know, in a you know, untouched, you know, fat. It may, you know, but they saw it. Like, mm-hmm. go ahead. So, who's amongst you who saw this temple in its former glory? Go ahead. And how do you see it now? Look at it. Mm-hmm. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Through. If I may real quick, because at that time you had Jake, you had the, like like the elders going into you had Jake that was like kind of looking at it. The older thing, they started like weeping. Mm-hmm. But they wasn't crying because I was with the tip. They was crying. They was like, it ain't, it ain't looking. It's, it doesn't look nothing like what we see in the right. Exactly. Right. So I got a prophet like, oh, man, hold up. There's a hole. Yeah, it's about to go into it. He, he about to go into it. Yep. Verse 4. Yet yeah, now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Be strong, O Zerubbabel. Say it to Howell. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Joseph, the mm-hmm. high priest. Mm-hmm. And be strong, O ye people of the land, said the Howell host. And work, for I am with you, said the Howell host. According to the, to the word that I covenanted with you, that's like it when you came out of Egypt. See, it all goes back to Egypt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Moses, showing you that's yeah. Moses, bro. <laughs> you that again, Bob Kishaw? Uh, verse 5 in Haggai, uh, the second chapter. According to the word that I covenant with you. With you. With you. Exactly. <laughs> Man. When wow. you came out of Egypt. That is a similitude right there. That's a seed. Tell the rest of Moses, bro. That's a, that's a hitting, that's a hitting dark saying. Remember it said Moses was king. Mm-hmm. In Jeshurun. Yeah, Jeshurun. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, can, I, can I grab it in the NLT? Yeah. Uh, this is Haggai 2 and 5 in the NLT. It says, my spirit remains among you just as I promised when you came out of Egypt. Oh, my so, spirit Remains among you. Mm-hmm. Wow. We just read in the Chronicles how he said his right hand was upon David in the spirit to, to put that on his head. Man. Wow. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. According to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, mm-hmm. so my spirit remaineth among you 
Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Man. Go ahead. For thus said the how of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea mm -hmm. and the dry land. And Habakkuk seen this in chapter 3. Yep. yep. And I will shake all. Because this is a prophecy yep. of this spiritual temple. Absolutely. Yep. Go ahead. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the how of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said the how of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the than of the former. Right. And that's the spiritual temple that Yahweh Shah is going to build. But it all starts with David. That's right. The Rubabel. And as we, you know, if we, I guess the, the next time we uh, start, we'll start in this chapter because he told the Rubabel something in the 21st verse mm -hmm. that tied to the keys, mm. the signet. The signet. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. So yep. we'll then, go ahead. When uh, Rubabel was back then in the temple, when Israel seen that, they gave us hope again. Right. Mm -hmm. That gave us hope. So, you know, it all ties into the spiritual temple that's going to be built through Yahweh Shai and the spirit starting with Peter, you know, when he came onto the scene. Absolutely. So we'll get into that on part two. Uh, hopefully you all were edified. I know it was a lot, but our history is vast. And we got to tap back into it so that we can have hope for these times. So with that, we're going to give all praise to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, And double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom. Shalom.